the book is widely known and it's a standard work and it's a must for all pediatric neurologists or pediatric neurologists in uh, training. Why was it so um, important to transform the content of this book to a web-based course? Well, it's uh, it's a new and important way of learning. It's become you know much more feasible, obviously, with all the developments in new media. Um, and I think that uh, different readers or users will uh, prefer the different formats. And I think that they also complement each other. Um, so you may find it handy to, to have a book uh, that the content of which is um, also the content of an online course that you've completed. Uh, you know, maybe I should um, just point out a couple of things. So the first is that this, when, this is not really my book. I, I'm uh, took a major role in editing it, but um, it has, I mean, the first edition had 34 authors and um, we must be over the 40 author mark for the, for the present one. So there's a huge um, amount of expertise and also clinical know-how that has been sort of poured into this book. Uh, and I'm, I'm very pleased with the result. Um, the second thing is that, um, the online course is um, something that's been developed very much together um, with the European Pediatric Neurology Society. Um, and um, you, Corianne, have been leading on this, so perhaps I should ask you some <laughs> questions about the course. Um, who do you think the course is um, well suited to and um, what did how did you decide what to include in each course? Uh, PTNS thinks that not only young people need teaching but that there is a uh, that there is a role for continuous teaching so the web-based course would be very suitable for uh, trainees in pediatric neurology or pediatric neurologists who are starting to find their way in the field but also for more senior colleagues um, who want to refresh their knowledge or who are working in a very um, well, very small field of pediatric neurology, for example, neuromuscular clinics or um, epileptology, who want to uh, refresh their, uh, their general knowledge. And I think such a course, following such a course together in a pediatric neurology department is a very good basis for a discussion uh, about uh, uh, pediatric neurology in general, especially because um, in each module, there are uh, three or four reflective activities in which you are asked to reflect on the, for example, on the uh, situation uh, in a certain uh, topic or field or uh, in your own department or in your own country. So I think this will stimulate discussions uh, between pediatric neurologists and trainees and whoever is working uh, uh, or interested in pediatric neurology in, uh, in, 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 in centers. So this, um, yeah, I think this might be very stimulating for also renewal one because the situation is never perfect uh, in a country in, in all aspects. So there will be, uh, you know, there will be there will be aspects which needs uh, renewal or will need uh, well, action. Right, and um, I, th when you talk about pediatric neurology, I guess different countries use slightly different labels, but you're really just talking about any doctor who's involved in uh, assessing and managing neurological problems in a fairly broad sense in, in, uh, in children. Isn't I think right? it could be pediatric neurologists, but of course also, there are also neurologists or uh, pediatricians in general who take care of children with pediatric neuro neurological problems. So they really uh, may be interested in uh, following modules or the whole course. I think it would be uh, very good that they 
their level of knowledge and basic knowledge is, uh, is, is ameliorated. So that's, uh, that's also one of the nice things of this, uh, this web-based course, yes, certainly. Um, and uh, maybe uh, because the reflective uh, uh, activities uh, can be put, can be noted down in the workbook, you know, one could have the illusion <laughs> that at the end of the course, you have any participant of the course will have a workbook with the um, uh, all the reflective activities and uh, actions to be taken uh, listed. So it will turn into an agenda for actions to be taken to ameliorate local or national uh, pediatric neurology care. So that uh, would be one of the other purposes of the of, of good things about uh, the course. Um, I noticed also that there are feedback forms in the uh, course. Uh, do you welcome feedback uh, on the course and what would you do with it? We certainly welcome feedback. I think it's very important and uh, um, it's going to be a, a sort of dynamic uh, course. Uh, it's not set in um, concrete and it will change over time and we'll certainly be responsive uh, to feedback, uh, both in terms of uh, content that um, people would like to see added uh, and also perhaps in some of the, the sort of methods or um, in which people can um, move from doing the course to making a positive change in their practice and different ways of, as you say, creating their own personal agendas and, and making it relevant to, to them, their patients, their families, um, I mean the families of their patients. And um, I think that's potentially a big um, advantage of the online course. <clears throat> uh, the uh, the web-based courses will be really, they will really have an advantage uh, over just reading the book. The book is nice to look up uh, in certain topics, but really learning is ameliorated when you follow the course. You know, what are the um, most, um, uh, what, what, what are the best things you learn from such a course in, in comparison to the book? Well, I th think the course should uh, perhaps push you to um, <clears throat> ask yourself uh, uh, more questions about the material uh, in the module because <clears throat> you've got the reflective activities um, which essentially ask you to consider how the material applies to your situation. So, um, and then um, you're also in, in a good position with, for example, some of the hyperlinks in there to, to do some further reading uh, based on uh, those issues, asking yourself those questions about how it applies to your practice. So, uh, for example, if you're wondering about um, how to interpret a genetic report and what is it that you will or find out and what is it that you might miss from a certain kind of genetic investigation um, uh, rather than just assuming that you've done the genetic test therefore if there's a genetic issue you'll have addressed it because that is very much not the case um, that would be one kind of example or um, if you've got a child with a suspected stroke uh, and you're wondering about the um, signal changes at different times in relation to the event, you'll find it's all in there, um, tabulated and laid out very clearly um, in the relevant chapter. Or if you're wondering about um, whether a lumbar puncture is absolutely necessary, whether or not there's a contraindication to lumbar puncture um, in a child with a fever in front of you, um, then you again you'll find firstly that the material in in the modules is is very relevant and um, secondly that uh, 
the uh, both the the questions at the end of the chapter and also the reflective questions within the chapter will um, help you to uh, and to some extent push you to to think it through and how it applies to your practice. So I think it certainly does add something uh, very substantial to simply reading the book. But really reinforces learning, you know, your pediatric neurology.